Kamash, the primary god of the Moabites was one of the most powerful gods who is very similar to Yahweh. But in what way? Why is he called the god who defeated Yahweh? Well, watch this video till the end to find out. Kamash was the most powerful god worshipped by the Moabites and by some Israelites. The specific characteristics of Kamash are not clear in many respects. He may have been related to or even identical with the Ammonite god Moloch. However, the fact that Solomon had high places built for both Kamash and Moloch at the same time and in nearly the same location indicates that these two deities were in some sense distinct from each other, as the national gods of Moab and Ammon, respectively, while Yahweh was the national god of Israel. The Moabites, Ammonites, and Israelites were reportedly kinsmen, and the Israelites sometimes worshipped Kamash, as well as their own national god, Yahweh. One of the most popular characteristics of the Hebrew god Yahweh was that he blessed those who worshipped him and allowed them to be conquered by their enemies when they did not. Kamash seems to have been sharing that same characteristic. Like Yahweh, he also blessed his people with military victory when they pleased him, and allowed them to be conquered by their enemies when they did not. Kamash was mentioned in the Bible as the abomination of Moab. King Solomon, the wisest man ever lived according to the Bible, built a high place for Kamash outside of Jerusalem in honor of his Moabite wife. Fun fact, Solomon had 1,000 wives. Well, actually it's 700 wives and 300 concubines. The Moabite king Mesha dedicated a high place to Kamash which contained a well-preserved inscription on the so-called Moabite stone, describing Chamash's involvement in Mesha's battles against the descendants of the Israelite kings Omri and Ahab. Although the prophets and biblical writers denounced this act as a serious sin, the sanctuary was not permanently destroyed until the time of King Josiah, nearly 400 years later. At times, human sacrifice was dedicated to Kamash, as it was to Molech and occasionally to Yahweh as well. Kamash is one of the few gods of Israel's neighbors for whom we have a contemporary source with which to compare the biblical account. According to the Moabite stone, an inscription created by the Moabite king Mesha, Kamash was the supreme Moabite deity who brought victory in battle when his people honored him properly, but allowed their enemies to prevail when they fell into sin. The Moabite stone is also known as Mesha steel. The Mesha steel was a remarkable monument, erected about 850 BCE as a record of Mesha's victories in his revolt against the Kingdom of Israel after the death of his overlord, King Ahab. Mesha identifies himself as the son of Kamash Melek who had ruled over Moab for 30 years. He attributes his successes to his god, to whom he has dedicated a lofty shrine at Karcho. According to the Mesha steel, the Moabites won the battle between the Israelites. Mesha demonstrated his success in the region by subordinating deities and religious materials foreign to Moab before Kamosh. I took from thence the vessels of Yahweh and dragged them before Kamosh. Rather than just defeat a nation through reclaiming their cities and killing inhabitants, Mesha confirmed his success by bringing Yahweh's religious items before Kamosh. In doing so, Mesha ritually subordinated Yahweh to Kamash. He said in the steel, I look down on him and on his house. And Israel has been defeated, has been defeated forever. The biblical account of the war between the Moabites also have a similar story. Both the steel and Bible agree that Israel was defeating Moab and they also agree that then Moab started to defeat Israel. Just when the Moabite capital is about to fall, Mesha sacrifices his eldest son upon the walls, and there was great indignation against Israel, and they departed from him, and returned to their own land. 2 Kings 3.27. Kamosh first, he was Moab's national god. Like the Israelite god Yahweh, he had punished his people by allowing neighboring tribes or nations to subjugate them. 
In this case, Kamash allowed the Israelites to oppress Moab for many years, a reference to the events confirmed by the biblical account during the reigns of the northern kings Omri and Ahab, when Moab became a vassal state of Israel. However, Mesha boasts that Kamash has blessed him with success and restored Moab's sovereignty, apparently the result of his piety. We also learn that Kamash communicated with the king, probably through a form of divination similar to the many biblical references to Israelite kings, inquiring of the Lord. Also similar to the Israelite tradition is Chamash's direct involvement in military decisions, such as his telling Mesha to go and take Nebo from the Israelites. So too is Mesha's act of dedicating to Kamash captured artifacts formerly devoted to Yahweh. Mesha says that he captured Nebo, a town located on the very mountain where Moses traditionally saw the promised land before dying. Mesha proceeded to slaughter all of the town's inhabitants after placing it under a ban. Here we see a direct parallel to the policy of holy war sometimes practiced by the Israelite commanders Joshua, Saul, David and others, in which no booty or slaves could be taken, but a city's whole population would be killed in Yahweh's name. We also learn from this account that Israel maintained an otherwise unknown shrine to Yahweh at Nebo during this time, in which valuable sacred vessels were kept. Kamash was apparently associated with the Semitic mother goddess Ashtar. Ashtar, here is probably equivalent to, Astarte, the Canaanite fertility goddess. If so, Kamash probably stood in the position of Astar's husband, as did El to Asherah and Baal to Astarte. The biblical attitude toward Kamash is the mirror opposite of the vision presented by Mesha, and as such, not completely dissimilar to it. An ancient poem twice quoted in the Old Testament regards the Moabites as the children of Kamash, and also calls them, the people of Kamash. Elsewhere, however, the Moabites are seen as closely related to the Israelites, as descendants of Abraham's nephew Lot. Yahweh himself protects them and tells Moses, Do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war, for I will not give you any part of their land. I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. Deuteronomy 2, 9. On critical occasions, a human sacrifice was considered necessary to secure the favor of Kamosh. During the time of Ahab's son Joram, a king of Moab, perhaps Mesha, is described as sacrificing his son in order to gain the upper hand when he was in dire military straits. Even the biblical writers are forced to admit that the strategy succeeded. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great, they withdrew and returned to their own land. 2 Kings 3.27. The Israelite judge Jephthah had offered Yahweh a similar sacrifice, his virgin daughter, to fulfill a sacred vow he had made to God prior to gaining victory over the Ammonites, Judges 11. Apparently a good deal of confusion existed in the minds of the Israelites concerning the relationship of Yahweh, Moloch, and Kamosh, and concerning what was expected by them from their people. The fact that ancient Israel had many gods along with Yahweh before Yahweh became the primary and the only god of the nation is quite interesting. What do you think about Kamosh and his similarity with other gods like Yahweh and Moloch? Let me know in the comments. What other historical and mythological stories you want me to make a video about? Comment down your thoughts. Tap the thumbs up icon and subscribe to this channel. It helps me so much. I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.